Welcome back to Case Closed Anime Review, Episode 110. This one reviewing the 999th episode of the anime called An Act of Kindness. Well, it's for the online as the Knowing Kindness. <clears throat> yeah. And this one is quite odd, to say the least. Though it's a pretty straightforward plot, in a way. So, you have a guy bragging about two things that where he sticks his nose and where does belong. First of which is... He's coming out from work one day. He sees a suspicious looking guy standing outside of his apartment. Place where he lives. And, hmm. Bear called the police on him. And it turns out he was actually there looking for a friend. I'm like, really? <clears throat> Basically, what this guy did was just waste the police time. <clears throat> Maybe acting suspiciously, yes. But there's nothing really wrong with the guy did. He was just looking for his friend. And apparently the same thing happened the very next day. Where he's in line to use an ATM machine. You have a guy talking on the phone. Suspecting maybe a uh, phone fraud. Call the police and then nope. It has nothing to do with phone fraud at all. It's just some calling his mother. Or I think that's what he said. But it was actually some other payment stuff related to a company he worked for and this guy did come and play later where this guy actually is the guy at the bar <clears throat> I mean and then and here's the thing they have they have the guy named Katsu that's the guy's name he excused himself from the sit down restaurant he's in no. <laughs> <coughs> and by the way Maury Rachel Maury ran that ran as we call her in the sub in the, in the dub she's Rachel and Cone just happily sitting at a table like apparently they've been there for a while there's no establishing shot of when they got there it's presumed they've probably been there for at least for over an hour given the fact that Maury decided, decided to order himself another beer and of course Rand's like like if you get drunk I'm, I'm leaving you here yep so Guy goes off to the bathroom, and we and I see something in the bathroom. Like, man, that that's a familiar device. Yes, if you're curious to what this thing is, this is not a traditional hand dryer. Where you sit up your hands and you're like this. This is referred to as an air blade dryer. You stick your hands into thing in in the air, shoes it like blades, and they basically dry your hands. At a place I work, McDonald's, we actually have one of these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first time I saw one of these things was actually at Bush Gardens. And this probably is a very popular hand dryer. Probably a lot. Uh, this thing, in my opinion, is a lot more effective as a hand dryer than the actual hand dryers. You know, the one where you press a button and thing just suits like this. The automatic air blade ones actually are much more effective. And they dry your hands a lot quicker. <clears throat> Do we see him where... We see it look like the hoodie guy just gets up in the bar. Apparently no one sees him getting up. And he walks over to the bathroom. Takes a broom. <clears throat> now this is a different, this is more like a, a janitor's broom. Kept in what looks like to be a stall. Yes, it looks like a stall. It keeps where all the toilet paper is. That's what it looks like to me, but here's the thing. Why the heck would a maintenance closet in the bathroom be unlocked <clears throat> because normally this thing is locked and <clears throat> also customers do not have access to these damn things and so he just grabs his broom and grabs a roll of toilet paper okay and then this guy in the blue hoodie whacks the guy puts the toilet paper in the hand dryer and walks away Though this is not actually, this is kind of what happened, but with a different person. Yeah, it's a little bit later <clears throat> of what exactly happened. <clears throat> and then later on, the guy's co worker goes to check on him, and he opens the door, and apparently he opened the door and said, Oh, emergency! And Conan and Maury run, run off, and they see the guy dead. Apparently, he's been whacking the head twice. Yes, twice. But first, in the back of the head. 
And the friend are like, how the heck is this possible? Because you saw in that sequence that he was whacked once. Apparently he was whacked twice. And then we see on the guy who reported it, see that his, his leg is, is got wire stain on it. And one of his buttons is missing. Hmm, interesting. Could he possibly be the killer? Yeah, he is. He's the killer. Yeah, there were actually two hints of this. I'm like, yeah, two episodes in a row where the hint is basically complete on the open. Now, here's the thing about basically when this murder happened. When Conan figured it out. He figured it out in this episode a lot quicker than he did in last week. Like, my gosh, it was something. <laughs> yeah. So, pretty much like, as soon as he pretty much figured it out, and as soon as he see that the forensic got up the button that was in the drain, and of course they pointed out though, that this, this thing is not, that this murder lacks common sense, and even though that says he doesn't shouldn't say anything, and McGuire is like, yeah, he's right. This makes no sense at all. The fact this can be completely random. And it kind of is. And then, of course, well, after the button is found, I'm like, hmm, I finally figured my murderer. And then, of course, well, more things that Conan stoop around. Knocks him out with the tranquilizer are using his bow tie. I don't even know if you don't see the other side of it for some reason this episode. Which, is that an animation error? Because normally when they have Conan using the voice changing bow tie they usually show the other side of it basically from the viewer's perspective where they see the other side this one looks like a normal bow tie i don't know if that's an animation error or something but it looks like a normal bow tie so why the heck was speaking why would Conan speaking in a normal bow tie make some freaking sense so he basically if you'll see what saw earlier did happen but with different person yeah, yeah, the guy who reported the murder actually was the one who actually committed it. And it turns out that the guy that got knocked out, he apparently like, got up, followed him briefly, because it looks like there was a struggle, because it was hinted by Moria it was a struggle. And then he gets whacked in the head again. And then after that, then he puts the toilet paper in the hand dryer. Yeah, this makes no sense at all. They never really explain why he did it for. I'm like... Um, why in the world would this guy do this? Because this is one little factoid about this episode that's never explained. Heck, the, they're questioning why the heck he did this for. For attention? Who knows? And despite the fact he is a murderer, like, end points of the evidence, yeah, the missing button basically is obvious. Is one obvious factor about this. Also, his glove disappeared. Yeah, in case you're wondering what happened to the gloves he used, they went down the drain. So, did he find these gloves completely at random? Because the way it looked in that closet, it looked like these were gloves were not in the closet. He may have brought these gloves with him. And so they expect this guy did it based on his missing button. <clears throat> so, he feels the reason why. So, they're basically, it involves his late sister. Where she witnesses a phantom slasher. Who the heck this slasher is, they don't really say. It seems like this guy kills people or ran it. That, 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 I would think, would make a good potential episode. Like, maybe after what happened, what's going to happen next week that we might actually explore this. But, who knows? Because, the thing with these animators, they very rarely follow up with them. Because, they're mostly standalone, very self-contained episodes. So... It turns out the reason why he wouldn't want to kill him because of his wild goose chase and the police sign. So the guys are on patrol at this police booth, which had two people on it. Okay. So, and then the random slasher just kills her. And the thing is, they never found out who the guy is because that would be a potential good mystery. They're like, like there's a phantom slasher out there. And yet, the police don't are not just really interested in it. Or us, I get the fact that there's just in this case, but I would think that would be cause of concern. Like, maybe Ram, I figured. Maybe she might be concerned because there's a slasher out there, but no reaction to it, which I thought that was kind of dumb. <clears throat> so, that was the reason why. And, of course, he hated him because of that. 
And then, of course, there was another person who really wanted to kill him. This was like that, that the guy who found him did definitely kill him. But some person didn't want to kill him. It was Man in the Hoodie. It was a guy who got fired from the second thing. The first guy, don't know what happened to him. He may have got fired. Who knows what happened to him? But, yeah, it was so obvious that this guy was a murderer based on, well, the two hints. It's an okay episode. The pace of this episode felt very quick. Like, the murder was solved way too quickly. Like, Cody managed to get this whole, like, deduction happened at the 12-minute mark. Yes, I was looking at the runtime of this damn thing. Like, Cody figures it out at the halfway point of the episode. And spends the next 10 minutes explaining this. Like, what we had just seen. So, yeah, the sequence we saw, the hooded guy kill him, yeah, that was all in his head. He planned to do that, yes, but he lost his nerve. He didn't. He couldn't do it. So simple as that. Mm-hmm. Like I said, okay episode. But next week's episode, like I saw the preview, like, hmm, this is a familiar case. It's the one involving the phantom fan piano stuff, and involving this happened on an island. Now this is basically a reboot. Yes, this is a reboot case. This is the first time I can think of they actually did this. But they had to pick something for the thousand episode. I would have thought, though, they would have chosen the very next canon case to do this. The one involving the Snowy Mountain, I thought I would do that. But nope. They didn't choose that. They chose an old case they adapted way back. I think it was like a second season of the show. Like, really? That far back? Okay, maybe they made a mistake with that one. Because I remember watching the episode. It was a really damn good episode. Of course, I watched it originally two years ago, but it was da- it was really good. I'm not really sure why they picked that one of all things to make. Like maybe they missed something in the original adaptation. It's possible, or they probably would make it due to the new animation. I would have thought though they would have just basically just remastered like they did with a lot of other episodes. Yes, like a lot of episodes uh, have been remastered. Yes. I would say like a good chunk of them. I'd say around close to around the first 700 episodes have been slowly been remastered over the years. Now, my guess is the reason why they're being remastered, and this is my personal theory, because this is on the older animation style, and my guess is these episodes were like losing it in a way where they need to be upgraded because they probably were getting degraded, so they need to restore it. So they basically did. So they had the remastered version. The only other show I can think of had remastered episodes of a TV show was Starship original series. That one had, like, almost the entire series remastered. Except, for like, one or two. But this is a Japanese anime. And in the case of Americans, I don't think we ever had a cartoon series that had a remastered series. No, not thing to think of. Unless somebody can remember any other cart- American cartoon series that has been remastered, please leave the comments below. But in the case of like any TV show that actually had remastered episodes, the first that comes to mind is Star Trek Original Series. But in the case of Japanese anime, this is the first one I can... Well, technically no, because Funimation has done some re- re- restored, uncut editions of Dragon Ball Z. And no, they didn't. Do, I think they do did some re- restoration for the original Dragon Ball series. I don't think they did much of anything for GT per se. Despite them being done on an older animation style. Mm-hmm. But next episode is the 1000th episode of the series. Congratulations, Case Close. For, for me personally, anyways, it's the first anime I've seen to reach this, this high. Though next one, obviously, is going to be One Piece. In about this, it will probably happen this year. Yes, because right now I think the most recent episode it was nine hundred sixty-three, so it's it's possible that it could reach that far. I mean, in case you're probably asking Nick, how many episodes are left before we reach episode one thousand? The answer is well, they probably aired this episode. They probably aired nine hundred sixty-four today, so there's roughly thirty-six episodes left until we reach episode one thousand. The only anime I can think of that actually has reached this far is Pokemon. Though I haven't watched it since like 2013. Because I fell behind in this show, I just didn't feel like going back to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's it for Circular View. Stay tuned for my next reviews. Like, I have two comic corners and 
a couple movie reviews I'm going to do. First of which is going to be a comic corner, then movie view, then comic corner, and then movie view. Okay? This video. Bye.